Hello and welcome to Ula Tea Leaf Readings. My name is Lenore and tonight I'm going to be reading your tea leaves. This is a horoscope for Aquarius. If Aquarius is your solar, lunar, ascendant slash rising sign, then this is a message for you. Okay, let's get started. All right. All right, all right. Let's see what these tea leaves have to say. I hope you all are doing well. Our card for tonight is the Four of Cups and in the Thoth system that has to do with luxury. This is a card that is kind of related to opportunities, emotional safety, an abundance of love, um, but a love that is full and giving and kind of, you know, luxurious. Um, there's also kind of this opening to explore love an exploration of love, if you will. And so it's a nice card, a nice card to receive. And this doesn't have to be romantic love. I know some of you are like, oh, I'm not interested in the romance. I hear you and I feel you. But love comes in many, many forms. Okay, well, let's get started. Speaking of love, <laughs> we have this nice heart right here. It does look like it's a little chipped away right at the edge there. I don't think that this is uh, any kind of negative thing. I feel like this is the form, the forming of a heart, of a deep, deep relationship, probably because this is reaching from that physical plane of the lower bowl up the sides and the emotional, and then almost reaching the tip here into where we would have love that is like agape, the love one has with and for the divine, the universe, spirit, God, whatever you like to call it. And I really think that there has been, um, there's been a lot of work you've done. I mean, a lot of self-work. Uh, you have been processing old hurts. Um, I think a lot of stuff that settles in your childhood. Um, in some ways, you've been re-raising yourself to kind of uh, work through some of the things that went on when you were young and felt like you weren't in control of your own life. Um, I think even under the same, or same, even under the best circumstances, when you are a child, um, none of us go unscathed by the world, right? Things happen that are hard to understand, that are emotionally um, challenging, dynamics shift, the world changes, our families change, um, you know, things come up, incidents happen, and we all kind of, uh, you know, pick up little pieces here and there that uh, can make parts of our childhood kind of difficult. And so I think very few people uh, get through life without having to kind of look back and uh, navigate some of those things, right? And I feel like you have been very conscious of this. You have come to a point in your life um, Maybe it's been some years, maybe it is very recently, uh, but whatever happened, um, and I, 
I guess that maybe it was something like becoming a parent. Um, maybe, I don't know, go, coming into your middle adulthood. Uh, so like maybe like in your 30s, 40s, uh, starting to really put a life together for yourself and, um, you know, noticing some things that are uncomfortable, uh, things that don't necessarily feel like they work for you. Sometimes, you know, we have reactions that come up and it's like, where did this come from? Why do I feel so strongly about this certain thing? And, you know, we kind of do some searching and we figure out where this maybe relates to. And I feel like this is kind of like the journey you've been on. And um, I want to say big, big uh, clap for you. I'm not going to put down the bowl and do it. But, um, you know, uh, I really respect anyone who spends time uh, trying to do some you know, self-archaeology, uh, examining your self-mythology, your, um, your hurts, your traumas, and um, getting into that mode of uh, processing, integrating, healing, and, um, you know, just overall becoming a person that uh, probably is more intuitive more empathetic, um, you know, just more understanding of other people, of your world. Uh, we need more of you out there for sure. So I think this has all, all of this has to do with this, um, this, this heart here. And I see over here kind of, uh, it looks like a person wearing maybe a robe or a dress of some kind. It's kind of blowing in the wind and it seems as though like they are, uh, reaching out for this little, this little piece here. And it looks very much like maybe a little, a child, um, kind of floating in space here. And I feel like this is very much the, the, the vibe of like, uh, the love of a mother, just really reaching out and, um, wanting to bring their child into them, you know, hold them and, uh, you know, covet them, help them grow, keep them safe, nurture them, all of these kinds of feelings and instincts. I think that, uh, this is a very powerful thing that is alive in you. Um, again, I, maybe you are a parent, you don't have to be a mother, but you know, um, this kind of the stereotype of what a mother would feel and, you know, any kind of caregiver, um, can feel these very strong, uh, relationships with the children that they are taking care of, of course. But, um, you know, just to simplify it, this kind of these, the instincts of a mother, of a father, of a parent. Um, but here I think that this has to do, uh, a lot with your own relationship with maybe the, um, maternal figures in your life, uh, you know, grandparents, grandmothers, mothers, uh, aunts, whatever, uh, whoever was raising you. And, um, I think that your relationship probably like most of any relationships we have with our mothers, uh, are usually pretty, you know, close and wonderful in some ways, but also can be terribly, um, hurtful and confusing and, um, you know, just marred with a lot of, um, uh, you know, just tumultuous interactions and things. And I think that, um, you know, from, I read this often being a mother of a, a toddler now myself, um, that a lot of times children feel 
the the comfort with their parents their mother father and so they act out more with them they feel safe enough to have their range of emotions and behaviors with them and I think that kind of often lasts for most of our lives right when we feel very comfortable and can reveal ourselves to our parents um, sometimes some of those like negative things that uh, we experience in life um, our coping mechanisms that we develop um, they are kind of used in that dynamic with our parents so um, I think that definitely there can be uh, some you know tricky tricky dynamics there uh, but I think that also there's just such a deep love and I feel like you know even if you've had some misunderstandings or big blow-ups or uh, maybe you don't talk as much as you know you should or feel like you should um, there's a deep deep love there that can never um, not be right and so I think that this is something that has been on your mind quite a bit. And, um, you know, that's, that's not a terrible thing. I think that when we, um, you know, something that I'm trying to remind myself as I get older, um, is that when we think about somebody, when we, um, you know, kind of, somebody goes through our, our, our mind briefly or for a while, um, even if it is hard, um, it's good for us to reach out to those people. Let them know that we've been thinking about them. It's amazing how little we kind of, we kind of just send those messages where it's like, hey, I've been thinking about this time that we did this or you know, I'm wondering how you're doing, or I just want you to know I love you. I mean, if you really think about it, how often do you get those messages? Um, so I feel like it's important for us to do, to kind of do that service and let people know, hey, I, you know, I'm thinking about you. And, um, you know, little by little, I think that really uh, ultimately makes people feel loved and and um cared for okay so i want to look at this one as we turn it over we see a uh, goat look at even with the kind of tail curled up there and the um, horns as well and um this is a, always a lovely symbol in my opinion um we have a being that is very fortified, a being that is um, thoughtful, contemplative, uh, that can traverse difficult terrain, you know, go right up the sides of those steep cliffs and hills and, you know, mountains and things. And, um, and uh, just really a, an animal that is so uh beautiful um sturdy just like they're really sturdy <laughs> when you see them it's amazing the things that the feats that they can um do with their their bodies they just are kind of wild little things especially when they're young and um I don't know if you've ever seen one that is pregnant or um, an older an older goat. They still just move so um, they're very uh, agile. That's the word that I want to I was thinking of. So I really think that you are a person that is quite flexible in your life, but you are thoughtful. Um, you are definitely considering things and, um, I think that really as you have done this work, um, about things that happened in the past, uh, you have really learned that forgiveness has been a huge key to freedom for you. Um, and 
you know, I also think that just kind of looking at some of the pain and going through it, processing it, um, you know, really uh, letting it, let yourself feel how you feel. Uh, I think that that has also helped you release some of the things. And uh, I really believe that for not only yourself, but for your uh, group of people, your line of people, your family, the people you consider important to you, if you know them or not, um, you have really worked hard to break, uh, break cycles within your line of whatever um, kinds of generational traumas or, um, you know, hurts and and things that have been kind of passed down through conditioning or, you know, whatever it is, uh, beliefs that we kind of learn passively from our families and these kinds of things. I think that you have been very intentional about healing some of that stuff. And, uh, this has lended, lended to you great power because, I mean, you know, only somebody, only a being who is um, quite brave, quite fortified, um, would would spend the time and and energetic resources to do this work. A lot of people go through life just kind of not wanting to um, even look at the stuff or consider it. And, you know, of course, it's very understandable. Sometimes it's just easier to kind of get, it's not easier, it's hard in its own way. But um, sometimes we just know how to survive the moment, right? So many times in my own life, I have just been surviving the days, the, the minutes, the hours of my days. And I had no room to even begin to consider looking at the old stuff, right? So, uh, you know, whatever has given itself over to you in this life cycle, in the cycle of your life, um, you have been uh, very productive as far as um, taking mind to yourself and really, really trying to heal, kind of till those, those vital soils of self and, and get it ready to, um, plant a beautiful garden. And I'm sure that you've had seasons of gardens already. Um, this is not your first, not your first <laughs> season there, but I think that, you know, it's just every year it's more and more beautiful. You're becoming very skilled at living your life. And that is not another rarity. Okay, and um, let's see. Okay. Okay, let's see. I kind of see a person in a hat. It almost looks like a person in a hat here. And they're holding a bag. And I'm trying to decide. And I really, I see this child again. And it really, um, in my opinion, this is so much about it's so kind of two things like uh you're raising yourself as i had as i had stated but this is also and maybe it's more than one than two but um kind of going back and pulling that that inner child that is pained alienated hurt and being with them just being there um and I think really uh, the other part of it is 
uh, kind of really just going over that relationship with your own um, caregivers, your parents, and a lot of forgiving happening there, letting it go. Even, you know, I feel like you are almost a person that's just like, well, they were people and they did their best and, um, you know, I love them. And of course you do. And of course those things are true. Uh, but sometimes there are things that come about that as you go through life and you get into situations where you really consider like, wow, that was, that was, um, you know, they should have done better there or they should have thought about that more. Um, and I think it's okay to kind of hold somebody responsible, but at the same time, forgive them and let them know that, um, you understand they were doing their best. And in that situation, they failed, right? So um, that, but I also think that there is this, this through all of this, it's very, very much, an, uh, I get this idea that you yourself um, are an amazing caregiver as well because you've really put your mind to um, doing this self-healing, doing this self-investigation. And maybe it wasn't exactly just to be like a better parent, but I think that you have thought about things like that. And maybe you are a caregiver within your career or, you know, you maybe a teacher or, um, in medicine of some kind, um, social work or, um, you know, um, child care, something. Uh, and, and so you think about these things often. You're very, I think that you have been very, um, intentional about a lot of this wanting to do better than the last, right? So, um, I really just, I feel like almost this, like, um, putting on your hat, getting your bag, you know, grabbing your kid, going out the door and just kind of moving forward into the future, into a better place, into, you know, um, f meeting that bright horizon and um, really just, you know, doing what you must to get there. And some of that has not been easy at all. Um, but I, I do believe that um, this is this is the kind of work that changes um, entire families, uh, you know, direct communities, uh, the larger community. Um, this is, you know, the, the healing is so important. The um, considering how we... Uh, how we have relationships, how we um, create environments and, and interactions and um, being together with other people and, you know, um, setting boundaries and teaching our children to set boundaries and, you know, how to honor one another and, you know, all of these things. These are... Um, I, you know, I think of like, uh, William Burroughs when he said that language is a virus from outer space. Well, the idea is that language is, you know, it's kind of the delivery system for these thought viruses, um, things, ideas, concepts that are passed from one person to the next because of beliefs or you know, superstitions or whatever. Um, and so when we speak to each other and honor one, honor each other, um, uplift each other, take care of each other, um, that's how we heal ourselves, heal each other, heal our communities. Okay. And of course it, that's, you know, a small part of it, but it is not also, it's also a huge part of it. Um, so, um, I think that, you know, this, this work creates the luxury that we're seeing in this card, 
Um, this is a this is a universal cosmic kind of love and a luxury and it is like absolutely priceless and um so you know i think that you are something to behold and right in the center here we have this beautiful little heart and i think that one is really important it kind of really just punctuates that energy okay so on here we have a quill uh, right there. It's kind of like a feather. And so I feel that in some aspect there is some kind of writing happening or the need to write. Um, maybe you need to write some of your stories. Um, maybe sharing some of your thoughts, feelings, passions, inspirations with others. Um, I think that you are a person that could be a healer, could be a leader. Um, definitely an influence on others. I also see this path emerging here and I feel that through this work um, and through this healing you are coming to a place where um, you will be beginning a new chapter of your life and if this is kind of a more formal um, rite of passage, something like graduating, having a child, getting married, um, retiring. These are just, these are, uh, rites of passage that kind of come to mind, but, um, it could be anything really, uh, that is of, you know, note in your life. And I believe that there is kind of a new path emerging, something that you are, uh, you know, taking part in choosing for yourself, not something that is so abrupt and, you know, like a, like a major death of a spouse or child or something like that, where your life is just kind of forced to be very different. I don't see that. This is something that is intentional. And so, um, I think that also, uh, through the process of writing about these things that are happening in your life or, um, the, your stories as you are processing them or your feelings, poetry, possibly whatever it is that, you know, that you write about. Um, I think that this will help you have a clear vision of how you want to go forward. Okay. So I want to thank you so much for spending this time with me tonight, Aquarius. It is always such an honor to be able to bring these messages to you. Um, <laughs> I just was about to start my spiel and I, for I forgot where I was going. Okay, so it is always such an honor to be with you and to bring these messages. It is, definitely. It's also um, Sunday night. <laughs> I am tired. We've had such a long weekend um, and just so much going on. There's just so many things going on during the summer. Uh, and it's so warm. Well, it is where we are anyways. And um, so anyways, if you would be so kind as to like the video, it helps us get into the algorithm. And I love to say we because I feel like all of us, each and every one of you, you're part of this channel. You're part of this community. Uh, if you haven't subscribed Please think about doing that too. You can hit the little bell. It'll let you know when the next videos are coming out. We are on a schedule of every sign being read once a week. And um, in between now and like seven days from now, you can watch your other placements and kind of see how those are affecting your, um, you know, your main placement. And... Um, other than that, if you want to leave a comment, I read every single one of them and I really honestly am so touched by, uh, the, just the support, the love and, um, the vulnerability that a lot of you have sharing your stories, um, talking about how things resonate and also interacting with one another when you are in there supporting each other. Um, saying kind things to each other. I I love seeing that. I mean, I really do. Um, you, you would be, I mean, amazed that 
you know, how a few kind words could really help somebody, um, especially if they are hurting. Um, it might not seem like much at the moment, but, you know, that person who is um, needing some kind of sign from the universe, support from, you know, their fel fellow humans, um, yeah, it, I mean, it really can be very important. So... I want to thank you, thank you, thank you, and we will talk again very soon.